My name is Ed Cornfield. I live in Anchorage, Alaska. This is my Cessna 180. AOPA keeps flying safe, accessible, and fun by protecting your freedom to fly. We are the most trusted one-stop resource for all things related to general aviation. Become an AOPA pilot today. It's a 1955 airplane. They started making the Cessna 180s in 1953, so it's just two years after, uh, after the first Cessna 180s were made. So the skis are, um, they're 3,000, that's the displacement for the weight. This is kind of a typical ski setup for straight skis, it means you take the wheels off and you put skis on instead of the wheels. And obviously there are other, other uh, options where you can have wheels and skis, retractable and penetration skis. This is serial number three, so this ski was one of the second sets ever made. And back in, uh, if you hold on, I'll look and see what the uh, date of manufacture on this one is uh, 1956, February of 1956. So this airplane was a year old when these skis were designed and made. So this airplane arrived in, in Alaska in Anchorage after, right after the 64 earthquake. A group of four families went together to buy the airplane. They had it for, for quite a few years all together. At one point they took it apart to paint it and then it sat in a friend of mine, very dear friend of mine's garage for, uh, for about 10 years. I happened to see it in there and uh, asked him about it. He said, well, we took it apart and uh, we had one of the members pass away and kind of lost interest. And I told him I'd put it together for him and in exchange for just using it. And um, I did that and uh, eventually he sold it to me and I've had it ever since. So I'm kind of the caretaker. The, my dear friends, the sort of uh, Tom Wardley and Jenny Hyatt are the ones that, that sold it to me. So. Um, I feel pretty indebted, so I sort of feel like I just I just take care of the airplane for them. So what I've been doing for the last few days, so we're in sort of like the middle of the race, we're um, between the Alaska Range and the Yukon River, so this is sort of like the interior, the central, uh, much colder than the coast and a lot more snow. We've been supplying places like Rhone, Nikolai, Takatna, Ofer, and Cripple, and then pretty soon we're going to start Ruby and Galena. Uh, so I've been going back and forth and dropping off people and supplies, veterinarians, race officials, and comms people. And uh, now, because the, uh, all the mushers have left Rhone heading this way, now we're starting to uh, take all the stuff back up that we, we dropped off at Rhone, cleaning it up, putting it back in the original condition that it was in before we got there, cleaning all the trash up and everything, and paying, taking all the uh, volunteers out. So just finishing that at Rhone Roadhouse uh, checkpoint.